Hi everyone, welcome back to Bun Friday, the Q&A edition. To be honest, it's kind of like end of January, beginning of February, there's not a lot going on. Um, I mean there is, but it's not like, oh, I've got all this stuff to show you and da da da. So I did a little, I put a question out on Instagram and said, I'm thinking of filming a Q&A, what do you think? I've got thousands of questions, I'll show you at the end how many. Um, so I'm just going to answer as many as I can in about 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, it's a personal Q&A, it's not a skincare Q&A. I might do that again uh, one week. Maybe we'll see how it goes. Maybe if underneath this in the comments, let me know what kind of Q&A you want me to do. I am filming a retinal Q&A after this. I also have my tea. Let's begin, shall we? Which pregnancy was your easiest and which was your hardest? Um, I'm quite lucky. My pregnancies were all fairly easy. Um, probably Daniel was the easiest in terms of a son number two. It was easiest because I knew what to expect, so it wasn't. I wasn't as worried about every tweak and oh god, you know. Um, and the hardest was probably Max, purely because he was the last, and I already had three children. But in terms of pregnancies, touch wood. I don't know why I'm touching wood because I'm not going to have any more. But I've been very lucky on the pregnancy front. What is the best and worst thing about your job? And that's Beauty Junkie London. Hi, Jen. The best and worst thing about my job is that the best thing about my job is the opportunities it provides for me and my family. Um, and the fact that I don't even consider it my job. I love what I do. So I do like the saying, you know, find, do something you love and you'll never work a day in your life. There's a reason that's a popular saying. Uh, the worst thing is I find it very hard to switch off. So uh, because of social media, I can take you know, I'll have hours maybe where I don't check it, but I very rarely go days without checking it. So, yeah, swings and roundabouts, but no complaints from me. Favourite meal you've ever had? Um, okay, I keep looking over here. I've got my phone here, but also I think it's the way I'm, your mind when you're thinking, you go, hmm. Okay, the, the most surprising and freshest food I've ever had was in Taiwan years ago. I was doing a training trip for Shantikai and it was the night before we came home and we had uh, fish and sushi and I hadn't really tasted properly prepared fresh fish and sushi like that before or since. I mean I love that kind of food but I remember thinking this is potentially the nicest thing I've ever tasted. That was amazing. I also like nice dinners with mates. So that question was asked by Jordan Samuel, who I had a dinner with last January, February in LA, which you would have seen with other mates and other industry people, Josh Rosebrook, May Lindstrom, January Labs. We all went out for dinner and that was great just for the company. I don't remember what we ate. I also enjoy a meal where the six of us as a family get together and no one fights. That's also a very pleasing meal. Biggest challenge, raising a teen girl. Um, the biggest challenge in raising a teen girl is to remember how horrible it is being a teen girl and to not throat punch them when they're being vile. That's the challenge. The other part of it is fine. I enjoy, I take great pride in building Ava up. My daughter's 17, in case you don't know. I forget that this audience is also quite varied. If you're on my Instagram and blog, you'll have seen Ava more. Um, I would, it, it's certainly more challenging than raising boys. There are quite a few questions about parenting in here, so it'll be all over the place. Um, but yeah, teen girls are their own special breed. I just want to preface this by saying anything I say about my children, I would die for them and they're the reason I breathe every day. Let's get that out of the way. But I'm not the kind of person who cherry coats and says, oh, everything's strawberries and sweetness and light. It's not. Years 15 and 16 with a teenage girl nearly finished me off, and I'm not exaggerating. I love you, boo. Um, who was your idol as a kid? Who did you want to be when you grew up? Two variations. As a very, very young child, I wanted to be my kindergarten teacher in Mississippi called Mrs. Juheim. She was beautiful. And I just thought she was really pretty and stylish in that 1970s way. She had long hair, it was parted, centre parted, she wore flares. And she was so sweet. You know how some teachers are just born to do it and they're really sweet people. She was really sweet. Um, 
I have met teachers since then who I would also like to throw a punch, but that's another story. Uh, but in terms of who I wanted to be like, I didn't really have a, I, I, know, I don't want to sound cheesy, I always wanted to be me, but more, like, more knowledgeable, more confident, uh, more aware, kinder, just more, and I still do. And I think anyone of any age will tell you, my age and older, I'm 50 this year, I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. Uh, Lad Muffin Beauty Science uh, says, is your son single and is he between, she's a chemist, is your son single and is he between half my age plus seven and twice my age minus 14? Um, I have one single son and one son that's taken, so you're going to need to be more specific. Maybe hit me up in my DMs and I'll intro you. Uh, and then I have about 15 messages from Ruth saying, it's Ruth by the way, do you like music, duh? How many of these do I have to send before you kill me? Do you like tea? Lols. Um, if you weren't in the beauty industry, what could you see yourself doing for work? I honestly don't know. I feel like the beauty industry is where I was meant to be. I've done it for so long now, it's just what I do. I love retail. I'd still, I think I'd be in retail maybe as a GM of a department store or I love retail and I love department stores and that's why it's so tragic. The state of the high street at the moment really upsets me. Um, I don't know, like, my girlfriend Annalise has a great job. She is uh, one of the top bods at Harrods and it always looks so interesting. I love a department store when it's done well. <laughs> um, you've been given a regular column in Hello. This is Sam Farmer, who I'm filming with next week. You've been given a regular column in Hello. What's it about? I would quite like to do a column in Hello about my Hello with Hirons. Um, but my regular column would be uh, what TV I've watched that week, what music I've listened to that week and new products I've had that week. Sounds good actually, hit me up hello. Favourite book, To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, is my favourite fiction book. I also love the book, um, oh god what's it called, Bill Bryson, the American one. Not Tales from a Small Island, that's the other one. It, oh, the, the Lost Continent, is it The Lost Continent? It opens with, I, I, came, I come from Des Moines, Iowa, someone had to. <laughs> that is a brilliant book. I've reread both of those numerous times. Lily Pebbles, me, you, Anna and Ruth, what roles would we all take on if we were stuck on a desert island? Okay, so Lily is five, six months pregnant. Sorry, Lils, I know somewhere in there, six months pregnant. So Lily could just sit and, you know, complain about being hot and bothered. Anna would organise us all, that's the Anna edit, and Ruth's model recommends would cook, which means I would have to kill everything or catch everything. Don't be offended, we're on an island, work with me. Um, so yeah, Ruth is a brilliant cook. She goes, oh, I haven't really made, prepared anything, I'll just rustle up a pasta. And then it's like a feast. And it takes her 10 minutes. She's offensive in most ways. She's gorgeous, super intelligent, super intelligent, kind, has beautiful children and can cook. Bitch. Um, top three live shows you've been to. This is my girlfriend Ash, there's loads of music questions. I'm a music head. Top three live shows you've been to. Paul McCartney in Hyde Park, which was rammed, I couldn't really see him, but it was with my best friend Heather and we were slightly tipsy. And I heard him do all the songs that I grew up with and it was amazing. When he did Band on the Run, I almost wet myself, literally from jumping up and down. That takes me back to the four kids. Um, I saw the Chili Peppers in 88, before they broke at the Clarendon in Hammersmith, which is now Hammersmith Broadway, the building on Hammersmith Broadway. It was an old pub and I saw the Socks on the Cox routine with Hillel, the original drummer, um, the original guitarist. And then I saw the Chili Peppers when John Frusciante came back into the band, the first gig he did when he was back in the band in Camden, in a, was it the pub or was it Camden Palace? I can't remember. That was also with Heather. Um, and I don't remember much about it except it was phenomenal. It's a sign of a good gig. I don't do that these days. These days I go to a gig, <laughs> I wear my glasses and I get a cab home. I know my age. If you could only listen to one song and repeat for the rest of your life, what would it be? How am I supposed to answer that, Ash? Um, that's my nails on the cup, that's my thinking. Um, probably Venice Queen by the Chili Peppers. It, there's, a, there's a like, oh, okay, the next question is top five favorite songs. So one of those, but if I had to pick, I think Venice Queen is my most played song on my iPod, I think. Top five favourite songs of all time. 
top of my head, California Dreaming, Mamas and Poppers, New Religion, Duran Duran, Venice Queen, Chili Peppers, Children in Bloom, Counting Crows, and can I leave number five as every other song that was ever made? Because there's very little I don't like. Will you ever go brunette again? I highly doubt it because I, I just don't, it, uh, it feels very flat, but the main reason is because I'm so grey, the upkeep is a nightmare. What is one of your earliest, oh my God, pinch me moments from your career? Um, I was quite chuffed when we, I did a blog post on Clinique's Take the Day Off and it sold out everywhere. We were getting feedback from all over, I mean worldwide that you couldn't get it. And Clinique gave me an official statement because people were being told it was being discontinued. And I went to them and I was like, what do you mean you're discontinuing it? And they said, oh, we don't think we are. And I said, can you give me some kind of statement thinking they just let me know. And they gave me an official statement. And I was kind of like, oh my God, one of the Lauder companies has given my little blog an official statement. That was quite cool. Uh, hang on, skincare, skincare, no, skincare. What are your sleeping habits like? What time do you usually go to bed and get up? Um, I, <laughs> I'm not a late, I don't stay up late. I'm not good if I don't get my sleep. I like to go to bed. I'm thinking about bed by nine o'clock and then I wake up naturally between five and six and I get up between six and eight, depending on what I have to do that day, who has to go to school, um, Jim always gets up and makes a cup of tea. I know I'm extremely lucky. Um, and if he doesn't for some reason, then I do. And then I shout at him because he didn't do it because I'm a spoiled bitch. Um, uh, but I sleep quite well. I'm a light sleeper because children, you know. And I still do that thing where if I've come in, it very rarely happens these days, but if I've come in late and Max is already asleep or Ava is, I just open the door and check on them to see if I can hear them breathing. They're 17 and 14, I know. Uh, you and Jim look like great parents, parenting tips. Uh, um, I don't know, you should probably ask my kids. Um, don't talk to them like they're idiots, don't ever tell them they're stupid, don't hit them. <laughs> um, explain to them when they've upset you, don't hold grudges, that's the worst actually. I see parents who aren't talking to their kids, don't hold grudges. Um, uh, yeah, talk to them and explain why you're upset but um, it also explain how it's not actually that important and you just want to make sure that you're helping them to be a good person. If you can't do that with a two-year-old, fair enough. When they're teens, you can. Um, yeah, actually, just communication. Talking is key. Um, and you can never, never shower them with too much love. My 27-year-old and 24-year-old come in the room and if I even saw them two hours ago, I'm like, Ben! Dan. And actually, I think I mentioned that before. I watched an Oprah in my formative parenting years. I hate the word parenting, by the way. It's, a, it's just not a verb. I hate it. But in my early years of being a parent, um, and Toni Morrison was on, and I'll find the clip and link it below. She said, the best advice she got, she said, someone, does your face light up? When your kid walks into the room, does your face light up? So don't project your anger, stress, you know, mood, whatever, onto them. If your kid walks in, they are looking for approval from you. Do you look at them and go, oh, where's your shoes? Where's your tie? You know, which is, so when I'm shouting at Max, I go, book bag. We go, always with like a light expression. Does your face light up? And then I started, that made me think and could almost make me cry, but I'm gonna get a grip. I'm gonna have to pause it now because I've got upset. What's wrong with me? Well, I'm gonna edit this bit. Okay, breathe. All of my grandparents, all of them, their face lit up whenever they saw me. Does your face light up? I loved my grandparents, hang on. Okay, teal fix it. Um, this is also, this is, okay, how do you manage work while at the same time looking after your family? Well, we have always tag teamed. I have a husband, I don't do this on my own. And we, uh, and when the kids, when the boys were little, he would come in from an, his office job and I would go out and waitress. We crossed in the hallway, literally. It's really, really hard work. And then when we had Max, uh, Jim, Jim stayed at home. He hated his job. I loved my job and he's been at home. So we're very, very fortunate in that, you know, we're the prime example of working really, 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 really hard, 
you build the life you want for yourself. That's the best way of putting it. How long have you lived in the same house? Oh, like 20, 25 years? 25 years? When you were a kid, what job did you want to have when you grew up? I wanted to be a teacher, then I wanted to be a midwife, and then I had a kid and had to spend time in prenatal departments, and I thought, oh, I can't be a midwife. Um, and, and then I kind of knew I wanted to be in business. I always wanted to be in business. My mum and dad were always, like, always workaholics. My work ethic comes from both of them. They're both, like, work, work, work. Um, and I would always go into their offices and sit and play on the calculator, which sounds really weird. And I used to put, it sounds sound, I just remember having putting paper clips on my fingernails to make it sound like I had nails so I could type. I don't know, I was a kid. Give me a break. <laughs> How are you so organized? You are like superwoman. Well, thank you, uh, Dindy Pindy. Um, I'm, I kind of have no choice but to be. And I'm not as organised as I need to be. Um, I have a lot to do. I make a. I don't. I make a lot of notes. I don't really do like lists that I tick off. I try to, and then I move them on to the next day. Um, and I don't drink. That's my number one. Um, I, I can't work the way I do and have the life I have and drink alcohol. It does not work for me. So. Uh, Everything got better when I gave up booze. And I'm not an alcoholic, I can happily have a drink and walk away, but the minute, I just don't think my body likes it, the minute I have one, I, I start to feel lethargic. I don't like to be, I'm a control freak. Okay, fine, I'm a control freak, that's how I'm so organized. I don't like to be out of control. I've never done drugs in my life. I, the thought of taking a drug does two things. It scares me to death, because <laughs> I'm a wimp. I don't, well, three things, I don't, want, it scares me to death, I don't want to be out of control, and my dad would batter me, and he's in his 70s. Um, when is your birthday? My birthday is in July. I'm a Leo. Uh, you're an awesome mum. How did you know you were ready to have kids? I always knew I wanted two kids before I was 25. Um, I didn't know I wanted Max and Ava until I wanted, and when I did want another baby, it was like a, a craving. I think if you have a craving, you know, if you're kind of humming and ahhing, you know, my best mate knew from being a child that she did not want children. She's a brilliant godmother. She has no interest in having her own. Full, full respect to her. I felt the same way, but I knew I wanted kids. There you go. Um, when did you decide to go into the beauty industry for your career? It kind of happened by accident. Um, I got a Saturday, Sunday job on the Aveda counter in Harvey Nichols and I loved it and went from there. I hadn't planned it. And then as soon as I did it, I thought, why didn't I do this years ago? This is like the best thing ever. So I highly recommend. Advice for working mums. Um, you can never do everything at once. There are, I saw a quote where you can be a good businesswoman, a good mum, or a good wife. I would add a good daughter, depending on how old your parents are. But you can never do all three or four at the same time. You can usually do two really well. So if I know I'm in really good communication with my kids and everything's cool and um, work is really flying and it's busy, I'm probably ignoring Jim. If Jim and I are getting on and I'm getting on really well with the, and I always get on with the kids, but I'm seeing a lot of the kids, it probably means I'm not working as hard as I could. Don't try and do it all, it's a myth. Men don't have to do it all, neither do we. When your kids were growing up, how did you go about balancing work and family? We didn't in the early years, it was all work. It was, but it was work to make sure the money was coming in to pay the bills. It wasn't work either of us wanted to do um, for the rest of our careers. It was just work, work, work. Literally just, um, yeah, I think at one point we had three or four jobs between us. Um, what is your favorite and least favorite thing about living in London? Uh, my least favorite is the traffic. I'm not a fan of Ubers. They have filled the roads with Prius cars and you can't get anywhere. Um, and I, my favorite thing is just London. It's a fantastic city. It's beautiful. The people, I like the mix of people. My husband and I was, we had always sort of said, oh, maybe we'll move out when we're a bit older. And <laughs> now that we are a bit older, 
we were sitting in a restaurant in Westfield a couple of weeks ago and we, we both looked around and said, why would we leave this? And there was literally someone from every, every walk of life around us. There was a table full of Muslim women um, in full of buyers. There was an Italian family. There was, and this was in Bill's restaurant, which is kind of telling because it's really good mixed food. There was a Polish family and we weren't spying. It's just everyone was loud and gregarious and we were just like, why would we... I, I would hate to live somewhere that was very, very rural uh, with loads of space and was very white. Mm. I don't care how that sounds, it's just how it is. I'm a Londoner. I don't know. Maybe we'll move out, maybe we'll move somewhere where we can get to London very quickly. Um, tell us about your background. You have some American family and I think Irish too. Yes, my mum's family are American and Irish. My granddad's American, my grandmother uh, my great grandparents were from Limer Limerick, um, and then they moved to Liverpool. And then my grandmother, my nana, married my granddad, who was a GI, and they moved back to America. And then my mum was born there, and then she, they moved back here, and that's how we're very cross Atlantic. Um, preferred type of caffeine, tea excluded. There is only one type of caffeine, Miss Mizey. Maisy, Mizey. Um, oh, no, that's Sarah. Sorry, Sarah, Sarah Houts. Houts? Uh, I like tea and I like fat coke. That's it. I don't drink coffee. I think it's disgusting. I love the smell. It makes me... The taste of it is just like, no. No, 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 no. Um, what's your secret to having such an amazingly close relationship with your kids? There are loads on parenting. If you want me to do something separate, I will, but I don't want to bore you all if you're sitting there going, I'm 20, I don't have kids and I don't care. Um, uh, communication. Talk to them. Talk to them. Uh, I, I've always said I'd much rather, and the other thing I say is, especially it's more important with boys as well, if you don't raise your kids, someone else will. So they need to know my agenda, uh, ours, <laughs> my husband did have some say in their upbringing, um, our agenda, our ethics, our morals, I don't care what your friends are doing, if that's unacceptable, it's unacceptable. Um, they need to be more worried about letting you down than about impressing their friends. And if you get that balance right, you're good. Because now I find that all of my sons and Ava's, all of my kids' friends love coming to our house because they know where they stand. Manners, yes, please, thank you, take your shoes off. Um, yeah, communication, being open with them. How long did it take you to be profitable where you no longer had to work a corporate job? Day one. I'm not joking, if you are ever thinking about leaving a job that you're not, you don't think you're best suited to, you get one client and you're away. You just need one client. If you're thinking of doing it, do it. I, I kind of think you will never get rich working for someone else. I've always said that and I think it's kind of true. Yeah, you might have a very generous boss, but the freedom is worth every late night, early morning phone call, every work trip, um, the, the, out, the hours, you know, I, I still, I don't respond to it because I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to tell people how to live their lives, I'm not. But the, the same people I see on places like Twitter uh, complaining about um, what other people seem to have are the same ones who are also tweeting about watching Coronation Street. There's no judgment for me about watching Coronation Street, but usually when I'm reading them complaining, I'm still at work. Work, work, work. Hard work. Don't be a dick. There's my two life mottos. <laughs> um, okay, let's do a couple more. How did you know your husband was the one? Uh, he walked in, we, we can't remember where we met. We either, me either met in a pub that's now Sainsbury's in Fulham or in the Marquee, which is now a restaurant in London, big, which was a famous club. Um, but it was either one and two or two and one. We met there and then the other. And he walked in and I was just like, Who's that, please? And that's kind of it. Took him two weeks to call me back, though, bastard. Um, how did you fall in love with Duran Duran? I saw them on Top of the Pops. We had just moved back from the States. I saw them on Top of the Pops with Planet Earth. And that was it. Is it too late to ask whether you're Team Angel or Team Spike? Because it's very, very important. I'm Team Buffy. Thank you. I love Spike for his humour but I'm Team Angel and I took my boys to meet David Borinaz at, um, oh God, what's it called? Forbidden Planet. Um, 
years ago, I think it was Daniel's sixth birthday, so it was 18 or so years ago, and it was full of young, like teenage and early 20 Buffy fans, and me and Heather, again, who's always my partner in crime, were so used to uh, getting into gigs and getting down the front and being bolshy and da da da. We took the boys, we got to the front of the queue, and they were just, you know, those kind of things, those meet and greets are like, at the time it was 20 quid, now it's like 50 quid. You meet them, they have a signed picture and then you're gone. They just shuffle you along. And I had the boys, we let them take a day off school. I was a cool mum, gave them a day off school, phoned the school and said they were both sick. Thank God social media did not exist when I was raising the boys. They bunked off school with my permission. We took them to meet David Borianaz. He looked gorgeous because he, he wasn't filming, so he had his natural brown hair and he was tanned, he did not look like Angel. And we jumped, pushed into the front, because we were like, we've got children. Pushed into the front, got a signed picture, and then I was like, I just need a photo. And I went, I went like this with a proper camera, and the woman went, you need to move. And Heather, who is <laughs> godmother and bodyguard, went, excuse me, for 20 quid, she's getting a picture. And everyone just stood back and shut up, and it was wonderful. And we still have the pictures. I'll try and find them and put them on the blog. Um, okay, we'll finish with two. Best one-liner for anti-vaxxers. Vaccinate your damn kids. Vaccinate your kids, that's all I'm gonna say. And you look fab, how did you lose weight? Now, I haven't really talked about um, my health journey that was resulted in me losing weight. If you want me to, I will. Um, I'm always a bit reluctant to do it because I feel like you're setting yourself up because you're like, oh, I've lost weight, and then you put it on. I've already put a little bit back on over Christmas and with my mother-in-law dying and stuff, so with the family collectively have put on a few stone because we were comfort eating. Um, I will if you want me to, uh, let me know in the comments. I, I haven't really made a big deal about it because it's, it's weird. It is weird to talk about something socially that you don't really even discuss with people you know. I will do if you think it will help you. Um, let me know, anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, hope that helps? So was it, why, why, why would I say that? I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed, it was a bit random, but um, um, can I just show you this? This is why, if I didn't get to your question, so let's go back to the beginning, that's, that's, the, that's the most recent ones. This, I don't know if you can even see it moving, but this is the questions, and it's ongoing. Um, maybe I'll do another one, and let me know what you think. I'm ranting, have a wonderful weekend, retinal Q&A's next, bye.